Well, thanks very much. Uh, I'd like to thank the Brain Foundation for granting this opportunity uh, with their generous gift. And I'd just like to echo something uh, Professor Kiernan said a little bit earlier about the Brain Foundation's role in uh, encouraging um, clinical research in new frontiers in clinical research. Uh, and, and this project is really focusing on um, children with concussion and using non-invasive brain stimulation to promote uh, brain-based recovery. And I thought it's important to uh, set the scene. Um, so, for instance, do you know that concussion in children uh, is a the occurrence of ch uh, concussion in children is actually higher than those in adults? In fact, over one in ten children who present with a mild traumatic brain injury in an emergency care setting uh, will develop persistent concussion systems up to four weeks after their injury. Symptoms of concussion are not dissimilar to those of in adults. We often associate concussion with a forceful head knock uh, suffered on the, on the sporting field. Uh, that leads to having headaches or bouts of dizziness. But the aftermath of a concussion can cause increasing levels of fatigue, uh, problems with sleep, uh, increasing uh, mood uh, disorders such as anxiety problems, and a poorer capability to retain and learn information. What's a real grey area in uh, paediatric concussion is how these problems affect a critical period of brain development. And currently, brain imaging methods and clinical assessment tools are not sensitive enough to detect the potential severity of the issue long term. And that leaves thousands of Australian children uh, in a position where they suffer from a variety of problems uh, described. It's therefore necessary that we investigate this um, in a very timely and advanced technique fashion. Our project uh, utilises two techniques to address this problem. Uh, the first technique is non-invasive brain stimulation, uh, which is an emerging technique in both adults, uh, used in adults and in children. Uh, that is both safe and painless in its administration. Now, the use of non-invasive brain stimulation as a therapy tool um, is primarily to repair and restore abnormal brain functions uh, via promoting communication between brain regions. In adults, it's been used uh, to treat for major depression and other mood disorders, and the use of this technique is now emerging in paediatric populations. Treatment via non-invasive brain stimulation is also relatively quick, uh, with one session lasting no more than 10 minutes and a full treatment course covering between 10 to 20 sequential sessions. In our study, uh, we will use non-invasive brain stimulation in 50 children, uh, representing a, a very landmark trial um, in Australia uh, to investigate whether this uh, treatment can be used to be an established uh, therapy model uh, for children with concussion uh, following uh, presentation emergency. Now the second technique of our project is brain connectivity. Now brain connectivity is a measurement technique that assesses the strength of communication between brain regions. Uh, this technique has been commonly used to study uh, neuropsychiatric conditions, uh, but we'll use brain connectivity to measure uh, the strength of uh, connections between brain regions by recording brain activity using high density uh, electroencephalography, or EEG, and functional neuroimaging um, in an MRI machine. Brain connectivity will enable us to assess how these brain connections are repaired and restored following non-invasive brain stimulation. We hope that this pilot trial in paediatric concussion can identify which children are benefiting from non-invasive brain stimulation. Our investigator team, including Associate Professor Karen Barlow, who's in the audience here tonight, and um, is an expert in paediatric concussion, and Dr. Luke Kochi, another investigator who's a neuroimaging and brain connectivity expert, uh, will help me investigate this area uh, using the techniques described. Uh, we hope that this research not only un enhances our understanding of brain functions following paediatric concussion, but more importantly, uh, help us to develop uh, what kind of targeted rehabilitation pathways that, quen that we can introduce uh, to this most vulnerable population. Thank you.